welcome back to another episode of Andrew Plays. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Now, I'm pretty sure we all know today is the 35th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers. So, you'd expect me to do something Super Mario Brothers related for this episode. Problem is, I already beat Super Mario Brothers for an episode of Andrew Plays earlier this year to celebrate me getting 150 YouTube subscribers. And honestly, I don't know what else I could do to for to celebrate. Um, Super Mario Brothers Special, I've never beaten before. Um, the other Mario games, it would take me way too long to beat for a single episode, although I might consider that in the future. So, I just did the next best thing. Today, we're going to be playing another famous Nintendo game, or in this case... Um, a port of a famous N Nintendo game. And you may remember the earlier episodes of Andrew Plays, we took a look at some of Nintendo's um, Hudson Soft PC uh, games. Uh, Mario Brothers Special, Punchball Mario Brothers, you know, stuff like that. Um, we're kind of going back to that with this episode. But this time, it's going to be one of the, the ports that they made. This one, of course, being Balloon Fight. The original Balloon Fight, um, it had an arcade version and an NES version, I mean Famicom version, both released in 1984. Um, Famicom version was um, programmed by the late and great Satoru Iwata. We all miss him very much, even in 2020. And well, this is a very well done port for the Sharp X-1. Yes, like the Sharp X-1 wasn't as powerful as like the MSX. But it was still a very fantastic computer for games. And especially if you compare it to most European microcomputers of the 80s, you'll find that the Japanese ones tend to be at least a little bit better. Especially with stuff like the, Sh the X1 and the MSX. And of course, the Sharp X68000. Although that was a little later and that was more of a 90s machine. Although it did come out in 1988, I think. But anywho, today we're going to be playing the Sharp X1 version of... Balloon Fight, fun little Nintendo game, one of my favorite Famicom games of all time, and this port is absolutely wonderful, and honestly, it, it could substitute for the Famicom version. Obviously, it's not as smooth, but the game still is very fun, and it has the two-player and the balloon trip mode. So, without further uh, ado, let's get started. I've got my NES controller with me, hooked up to my computer with an adapter, L let's let's begin, guys. Basic premise of balloon fight. You got a little guy with two balloons strapped to his head. You gotta flap yourself around in order to take out these bur these uh, guys that also have balloons. They're trying to pop your balloons and send you into the water below. So you gotta s send them to the water by landing on top of their balloons to pop them. And, uh, yeah. There are also bubbles, and there's also a fish swimming down in the water that swims left and right down beneath the water, and if you're above it as it passes, um, it'll try to get you, but it'll also try to get the enemies. Fairly basic stuff. This is obviously inspired by the classic arcade game Joust, which Mr. Iwata was responsible for porting to the Famicom in 1983 when Nintendo had a deal with Atari to bring the, any, the Famicom to the United States. Of course, that deal never went through, but um, HAL Labs' code for all the arcade ports that they were assigned to make um, survived, and they were able to publish them on the Famicom and on the NES. So we got those got to see the light of day. And Mr. Iwata's Joust port was very well done, so I'm not surprised that... He was also able to make such a great game of Balloon Fight. Um, honestly, Balloon Fight's better because, well, it's just it just has that little Nintendo touch where they just do something special with it and make it just magical in a way. It's hard to explain, but if you, if you play Joust and then you play this game, you'll know what I mean. very well represented here on the Sharp X1, with all the trimmings. 
the bonus stages, the two player, the balloon trip. It's all well represented here, and the physics are really well done. Sure, the things, they move around. It seems a little bit slow in the movement, but it feels about the same. It, it, it feels right. This is honestly one of the best of the Hudson Soft Nintendo um, PC games. It, it's just so well done. I, ju I just love this port so much. There were other ports for other computers that they did with Hudson. I trying to remember which ones were done. I think the PC-88 was one of them, and then there was also, I think the FM-7 was also one. Another port of that, that was done. Uh, yeah, this, this is a really good version. Flapping around. And the colors are pretty well represented here. They're not the same as the Famicom, but they got, they got the colors down mostly. It's a very colorful game. Like, look at all these. Got the yellows, the blues, the greens, the browns, the whites, the blacks. No pink, though. I don't think there's any pink in this game, which sucks because pink is a great color. We, we should bring back the hot pink trend. It shouldn't have been a thing that was left in the 80s. Come on, guys. It's 2020. We, we've known better that pink can be for anything. So, we need to bring back the hot pink from the 80s. That's something that needs to return to the 80s. Like, vinyls. Although, vinyls have been around longer than the 80s, like... But, still, though, like... We need to bring back the hot pink. For the love of God, please! I love pink. Pink Floyd. I love the band Pink Floyd. I love the color pink. I love blue is my favorite color. For those who do not know... Some of my the things I've made, like videos and other things, you might know that I love the color blue. Which is also why my watermark for my YouTube groups and other edits um, is cyan or light blue, because, well, I love blue. More specifically, the lighter shades of blue. And I missed two balloons. Still, I got a pretty good score. Phase 7. Oh god, oh god, they're, they're gonna pop me. Yeah, you gotta watch out for a little pointer on the their face mask. Oh my god. Oh, oh crap, oh god. The sparks, they're so deadly. I'm actually pretty good at this game. I usually, whenever I play, I can usually get up to like 100,000 or 200,000 in just a single run. Like... Yeah, this is a this is just a fantastic game. The only thing I don't like about these earlier co-op games is that they don't allow you to continue after you die. Like once you're done, I mean once you're once you lose all your lives, you're done, and you have to wait for the other person to finish, or you he has to start over just so you don't have to wait for him to be done. I mean for them, for, you don't have to wait for them, not him, her, etc. Ah, got me. Game over. Hmm. Let let's uh let's try the balloon trip. Might as well. I don't like the balloon trip that much. I honestly prefer the main game. But the balloon trip is alright. Like there are people out there who complain about these computers games where the scrolling is just kind of jagged. I honest, I'm probably the only person who doesn't care. I'm dead. But anyway, yeah, it's like with it's like with MSX games like Gradius or games like this that the scrolling is like jagged. I'm probably the only person in the world who really doesn't care about that sort of thing. I've heard people complain about that t many times before, but honestly, it's not that much of a pain for me. You know what? Let's just do another round of the regular game because that's more my speed. Yeah, they, they got 
got my physics down pretty well for this port. I don't know who programmed this port, but it was from Hudson Soft, and you know, you can usually expect quality from those guys. They made such great games. Uh, they made the they made the Bomberman games, the Adventure Island games, although that technically was started by West by uh, Escape and Sega, but Hudson just took that the Wonder Boy concept and just ran with it, whereas Sega just turned Wonder Boy into an action RPG series, which is cool. I love action RPGs, but sometimes you gotta stick with your roots, and that's what Hudson did with the, with the Adventure Island series. They also made uh, they also made the Famicom version of Load Runner, which is really good. And they also made the PC Engine version of the game called Battle Load Runner, which is also very fun. Uh, there was also uh, Princess Tomato and Salad Kingdom. Some people don't like that game, while others do. I've never played it, but it definitely seems interesting enough. Um, hmm, what else? Hudson, uh... What else did Hudson do? I'm trying to remember. Uh, well, well, they did this. They, they did this, which was really cool. They did Nuts nuts and Milk. That's a pretty good game, especially on the Famicom. That's a, that's a fun little Famicom game. Uh, what else? Ooh, trying to remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, the Star Soldier series. Yes, Hudson made some fantastic shooters, and the, their main one was the Star Soldier uh, line of games. Those are fantastic. I love Star Soldier so much. Like, so much, so much. Like, it, it's a fantastic series of shooters. Especially, the original is still fantastic on the, any, on the Famicom and NES. That game is just Binary Land was pretty cool. You ever, you ever played Binary Land? That was a Famicom puzzle game. It was a maze sort of thing where you had two penguins. Um, and they were like, you control both of them at the same time. But, and you have to like, guide them through a maze full of spiders and stuff. It was a pretty cool game. A very unique one, at that. Um. Oh yeah, uh, also, uh, they also made Newtopia. For the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics, that game is fantastic. I don't hear that many people talk about it. It's basically they took Zelda One, they made a clone of Zelda One, but they improved upon it in so many ways. Like it's a little bit more linear than Zelda One, but honestly, it's just a lot more enjoyable of an experience. At least from my experience, like Zelda One, I had fun with it, but it got really frustrating by like the fourth dungeon. Like that's where I really got frustrated with the game. So much so that in order to beat it, I had to use the rewind feature in NES Online to actually be able to see the ending of the game, because that's how frustrating it got for me. But Newtopia, I haven't had to cheat once in that game. That game is way more fun, and the music is just fantastic. There's so many good tracks. I might even say that the tracks are a little bit better than the NES Zelda 1. Although, and Zelda 1's music is still legendary, but I love Newtopia's soundtrack. It's such an underrated game, adventure game, and even got a sequel, which I don't know what it, how it plays or anything, I haven't seen what it looks like for myself, but once I beat uh, the first Newtopia game, I'll definitely have to check that one out, uh, when I can. And, uh... Oh yeah, um, what else? Hmm... What else did Hudson do? I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, uh, Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu. That game was pretty cool. Like, it was like Jackie Chan... Like, Jackie Chan is very popular in Japan, for those who don't know. It's not just Hong Kong where he was a very popular back then, before the US. He was also a massive 
success in Japan. He's like, he's a massive celebrity over there. So much so that, that Will Hudson made a video game about him in 1990, I think. Um, first on the Famicom, it was just known in Japan as Jackie Chan. But the game it was called just Jackie Chan, but in America it was Ax Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu. Um, it was released on the Famicom and NES in 1990. Then they made a PC Engine and Turbo Graphics port in 1992, which also saw a US release, and it was basically the same game, but in 16-bit graphics and, you know, a better experience. But both versions are fantastic. It's a, it's a fun little action game, and it features our favorite action star, Jackie Chan, going around and doing his little moves, and it's got the funny facial expressions, which is something you'd expect from Jackie Chan, so... Thank you, Hudson, for doing that wonderful thing for us. I'm forever in your debt. And not only that, but, uh, Hudson also made the Bonk Games. The Bonk Games are fantastic. Like, it's just... The bonk, yeah, it's like the Bonk Games are just so good. Like, bonk, Bonk's Revenge and Bonk 3 are definitely good. I haven't played Super Bonk, but I've heard that one's a pretty good game, too. Um, then there's also the Air Zonk series, which is basically a, a futuristic spin-off of Bonk, but instead of a platformer, it's, um, a shooter series, I think. I've heard good things about Air Zonk, that's another Hudson classic. And speaking of Hudson, uh, um, there was this thing they did in around the 2000s, the early 2000s, there was a game on the GameCube, only in Japan, I think it was also on PS2, I can't remember. Uh, Dream Mix War Dream Mix TV World Fighters, I think it was called. It's basically a crossover between Hudson, Konami, and Takara, featuring different franchises that they own. Like there was like you got Hudson, they had like Bomberman and uh, Master Higgins or Master or Master Takahashi from Adventure Island. And then we had uh, Konami, which had uh, Simon Belmont and uh, uh, Twin B. Um, I think there were a few other Hudson characters and Konami characters, and then there was Takara, which meant you had Optimus Prime from the Transformers series, since Takara made the original toys that became Transformers, and they were also the official rights holders of t Transformers in Japan. And yeah, it, it, it was a really cool fighting game. It was basically like a Super Smash Brothers sort of thing, but with Hudson, Konami, and, uh, Takara characters. Unfortunately, it was only in Japan, but if you have... But if you have a dolphin emulator, or if you were able, if you're able to mod a Wii to remove the region lock, and you're able to get digital ISOs on it, or find a Japanese disc of the game, you can play it. And it's fun, and it's awesome, and I love it. And stuff. Damn, I'm really blowing through this game. I, I'm already at 200,000 points. about the, the Hudson and Nintendo thing. Um, one of the other games they ported to the computers from Nintendo was um, Golf. Like, Nintendo's Golf game got a port for PCs, and it's actually the closest to the original game because, well, the colors are the same, and it, and it goes at around the same pace, but the, the computer ports are technically superior, especially the Sharp X1, because they actually added s um, some title screen music, which sounds pretty cool. Um... Unlike the Famicom version, which is mostly just silence. Although, speaking of which, um, the arcade version of Nintendo's Golf, known as Versus Stroke and Match Golf, um, actually added some music during the parts. Actually added in some music during the part where you're readying up your shot. And of course, this would later carry over into the Famicom Disk System Golf Games, uh, fam Family Computer Golf Tournament Japan Course and US Course. 1987, and then eventually Mario Open Golf in 1992, I think? 1991, 92, I can't remember. Um, uh, like, Mario Open Golf. Well, that's the Japanese title. The US title was NES Open Tournament Golf. But yeah, it's like... It's pretty cool. And not only that, there's also a ladies version of the arcade golf game. There's a ladies variant that was 
I think, easier. Featuring a, a female player. That's a pretty cool thing. I'm, I'm surprised Nintendo didn't, like, come, like, decide to release the ladies variant on home consoles. You can only play it in the arcade. And then there's also a uh, Balloon Kid on the Game Boy, which I haven't played yet. I've heard it's really good, but I never bothered with it for some reason. I guess I'm too lazy. But I've heard it's really good uh, game for those who like balloon fights, so I'm gonna have to check that out someday. Maybe I might even play some of it here for Andrew Plays. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Yes! Got him. That's what you mostly you do in Balloon Fight, you just bounce. It's all about bouncing. I think Tigger would like this game a lot. He does a lot of bouncing. Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. I love Winnie the Pooh. If you, if you didn't know that, I, I love Winnie the Pooh. It's such a fantastic thing. Especially the Disney version. Like, A.A. Milne's version is cool, but the Disney version is obviously... I don't know, it's, it's just awesome. I might get 300,000. And I did get 300,000. That's awesome. have like pointy noses but your character has like a little stubby nose that's kind of cute that's a, that's a pretty cute thing kind of reminds me of stanley from uh, donkey kong 3 he has a pretty short nose and i am dead that's a game over that is the best score i've ever scored in any game of balloon fight i've ever played on any platform and well yeah that's balloon fight the sharp x1 version of balloon fight pretty fun pretty imp very well made port i love it very much and if you were, if you ever decide to get into playing some Sharp X1 games, I recommend checking out uh, this port of Balloon Fight. It's very fun, and it has all the trimmings of the Famicom and NES versions. So yeah, I really enjoyed doing that, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching me play this game while talking about a bunch of stuff. So uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of Andrew Plays, and as always, thank you everybody for watching. I am Andrew Ambrose, and I will catch you later.